Hello, we're Team 11, and today we're going to be talking about the synthesis of a slider crank and the analysis of four-bar mechanism. Juliano Grawl is in charge of modeling and real-world applications. Rudy Moran is in charge of the slider crank, and myself, I'm in charge of the analysis of a four-bar mechanism. Okay, so what is a mechanism? Mechanism is basically an assortment of links and joints used to uh, transfer one force from one area to another. Depending on what your links and joints are, you might have different sets of mobility. Mobility is your degree of freedom or how many inputs you need in order to drive the mechanism. And your mechanical advantage would be your um, ratio between amount of inputs and outputs. Okay, now for a little bit of history on mechanisms. So, mechanisms can date back to even before written history and our first accounts would be in the passes of Egypt on pictures of Egyptians using levers and fulcrums to move heavy objects. Uh, along with these, uh, people like Archimedes, the hero of Alexandria, Leonardo, and even James coming up with the James Watt with the steam engine all added to the understanding of linkages and mechanisms. So, Walt and Postelier were some of the main components in driving uh, the Industrial Revolution with the steam engine. They turned rotational motion into linear motion. Uh, along with this, when computers came along and more mathematicians were involved, the synthesis and, uh, and analysis of mechanisms do, using math and geometry took leaps and bounds, especially with the computers and uh, being able to make any type of mechanism your heart desires. So now for the analysis of the four-bar mechanism. Our mechanism left us a little uh, room to play with. We were able to choose the links of R1 and, R and R4, and then our, our input was that the, uh, the, our coupler, theta three. Our angle for R1 would be 35 degrees, and we had no acceleration at our, at our input, but we had an input velocity of 20 uh, radians per second. So now, to calculate the positions of each one of our joints, we had to first create our loop equations and solve for the two unknowns. The only problem was because our input was at theta three, we weren't able to solve for all the angles of theta two and theta four. Knowing, knowing that our system was a crank rocker, we switched our input to theta two because we knew that went to 360 degrees, and then we were able to find theta three and theta four from that point on. And then from here, we were able to find the positions of our S. Our S was, is, is a, a bar, a link attached to our coupler, and in our case, beta would be zero, so it was lying on our coupler. Uh, this is, these would be the equations for x and y position of the point S, and as you can see here, point S does a circle that's very similar to the end of link, uh, link two and the beginning of link three. So for our velocity analysis, it's, in order to do that, it's basically a derivative of our loop equations for positions and then using matrices to solve for your two unknowns, in this case, omega two and omega four. As you can see here, when the coupler changes directions, we have uh, large increases in velocity uh, at both 155 degrees and 355 degrees. And you can see the same for omega four, more or less the same pattern, large in increases when our coupler changes directions. Okay, acceleration, again, it's the same process as a velocity. It'd be the derivative of the velocity loop equations and using matrices to solve for your two unknowns, in this case, alpha two and alpha four. Again, same patterns at 155 degrees and 355 degrees where you see large increases in acceleration due to the change in direction of the coupler. I'll be discussing the modern application. Here we chose the pump jack, or what's better known as the horse head pump because of this feature here at the end. This is a reciprocating mechanism and it's widely used to pump liquids to the surface when the pressure gradient isn't sufficient enough to drive the liquid to the surface. This is an animation of what the mechanism, um, the positions that it goes through. You'll see here that there's this changing angle that represents the front of, the, of, of this beam, which is our R3. We have a stationary angle of R1, which is 60 degrees. In this case, it was changed just to make the model look a little bit nicer but these link lengths all remain the same. So here we have the modern application of the oil pump in an oil field. And you'll see that its mechanism is pretty similar, except now gravity is actually driving the front of the, of the head. Hello, I, I was in charge of doing the slider crank synthesis. Uh, so we're given a few uh, actual positions, A1, B1, A2, B2, a3, uh, B3, and we're going to go ahead and determine, the first thing we had to do is determine the position of A0, which is the actual, uh, the revolute joint that holds the, uh, all the linkage together. We're going to find pole positions that are on a circle of slides, and doing so, we're going to find the points of which, along which the slider slides. So, in order to find uh, the A0 uh, actual position here, 
we're going to use this matrix. This matrix is in, a, is in a MATLAB format. The commas represent uh, different columns. The semicolons represent rows. So this is the actual uh, matrix that we used to actual uh, to solve this. And the difference between that and the pole position is that pole positions, all you need is about two points. So if you're going to find pole P12, that corresponds to A1, B1, and A2, B2. And if uh, vice versa for uh, pole 1, 3, you would find A1, B1, and A3, B3. So the circle of slides, what does it do for us? It illust illust illustrates the center of the circle for us, as well as the pole positions. One thing I do want to highlight on, on the circle of slides is that P23, uh, with the apostrophe here, prime, P23 prime, is an uh, image pole from P23. And so the way we find this is through a little, uh, some simple geometry finding beta, theta, as well as uh, the, the difference between poles uh, 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. The differences of them give us the, some parameters to calculate P23 prime. So the position C1, C2, and C3, this is down here, 1, 2, and 3, uh, will tell us the approximate sliding mechanism of our slider. So these are a few components that, that we came up with during the synthesis that are key to making this synthesis actual su uh, successful and making it complete. So the checklist is we have to have an exact slope. So on this slope check down here, you can uh, see that the slope between these actual points and the slider are very close together. We have uh, this R3 has to be, uh, the link R3 has to be greater than R2 and uh, R2 and R4. The reason for this is that on our mechanism ourselves, when we were going through our iterations, we found out that R3, when it was approximately the size of either R2 or R3, when it would lock up. And so this is a general guideline that we found through our, uh, some of our iterations. And we actually, we have to have the same the coupler lengths. Well, one of the keys of this project was, and after we synthesized it, to have the coupler pass through the specified points. In order for this to happen, we need to make sure that the link, uh, the, the distances A1 and B1 are gonna be pretty much the exact same distance, otherwise they're not gonna pass through these points. For the slider crank application, we have here a water wheel powered saw. Now the water wheel is powered by either a stream or a river, which then powers the saw, which cuts the block. So for our project outcome, we've learned how to design practical mechanisms we learned how to manipulate the inputs to derive different kinds of mechanisms, especially with the Grashoff's, uh, Grashoff's Law. Real-world applications of our four-bar slider crank, so we're able to uh, first come up with the four-bar and then the slider crank mechanism, and then find its real-world application. Lastly, we calculated or we verified all our calculations in SOLIDWORKS to see if what we've, what we've come up with, what we've derived, actually did work and went through a, went through a full rotation of the mechanism.